Oh hey, it has been way too long since I have filmed a recent reads. I'm not necessarily tying it to a specific schedule of once a month, but that sometimes also means that I just put it off, apparently, uh, which is what I was worried about. But I need to catch up. I believe the last time I did a recent reads, it was kind of through mid-April, and I believe I ended with Authority. On the bright side, most of the ones that I've read at the end of April and throughout May have been for vlogs, which I will link below. I'm gonna have some wine as I discuss. I've not planned this video, I just know I have a lot of filming to catch up on, and so I decided to just sit down, bust through everything, get her done. Um, so I haven't planned this as much as I normally would. I don't script my videos or anything, but I at least, I at least typically have thought about it a little bit more than I have. So we're just going to roll with it. Um, but I think I left off on authority. And I think after that I focused on, and I, again, I will link all the vlogs below. I will also link the TBR videos that are relevant below. So I had a TBR video where I picked a bunch of prompts for reading vlogs and then gave some options for what I would want to read. And so most of these are those vlogs. I, Kim from Expedition Through Pages also uh, drew me some prompts through her TBR game, and I will also link that information down below. So that's the fourth of vlog that I will be talking about here. So most of this is covered through that, but I'll talk more about the ones that aren't in those vlogs and then very quickly go over the ones that are in vlogs. So the first one I did was the vlog where I was starting a bunch of series, and I read uh, Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb. This is the first book in the Life Ship Trader series, which is the second series in her overall realm of the Elderling world. The first series follows what's going on on land. This one follows what's going on on sea. So it's ships, pirates, magic. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was everything I love about Robin Hobbs and her deep, amazing character work. It's very slow, but her character work is amazing. So I absolutely fell in love with this first book. And in general, this one follows the adventures of a whole cast of characters, uh, mostly the Vestra family. Our main character, mostly Althea, it thinks that she's going to inherit this live ship, which is a ship that has some sort of sentience after three generations of a family die on its decks. And Althea is set to inherit, or she thinks she's set to inherit the ship after it becomes a live ship. Lo and behold, it goes to her sister, and her sister's husband actually takes over the running of the ship. And so she's trying to get her ship back. And there's a whole bunch of other politics amongst the trader families in this area and between some of the islands. Uh, there are pirates. It's, it's just, it's amazing. It's amazing. Loved it. I also read... I uh, also read All Systems Read by Martha Wells. This is the first novella in the Murderbot Diary series. Absolutely love this one. Uh, Murderbot is a sexless, genderless, I, I say AI robot. It's kind of a mix of human and AI in a sense. And it's supposed to be part of a, a group of robots that can be contracted out for security purposes. And there's a team of scientists who are doing some investigation and research on the planet. They hire uh, our main character, Murderbot, as security under a contract, but Murderbot has hacked its governor module and no longer actually needs to obey the commands that it's supposed to obey, and, you know, does its job, but doesn't necessarily want to interact with humans very much, and would rather chill and watch soap operas. And the antisocial inclinations were very relatable. <laughs> Uh, this was delightful. It was hilarious. I talk more about it in this vlog, obviously, um, so I'm going to be brief here. I also read Breach of Peace by Daniel Green. This is the start of his novella trilogy, and this one was super interesting. Again, I wanted a couple of novellas to balance out the long book that was Ship of Magic. And this one was entertaining. It was very interesting and very intrigued. For more, it was only 100 pages, so again, it's, you know, there's not too much there in terms of plot or development because there's more to come, right? And so, but I'm very intrigued. It follows a murder investigation in a fantastical world, and so you follow some of the investigators and you know, they start to realize that there's more going on 
and how that might relate to the other politics happening in this world. Super interesting. I'm very intrigued to read the next one. I then read a nonfiction by Matt Haig, Notes on a Nervous Planet. I thought this one was really interesting. I have enjoyed two of Matt Haig's fiction books, and I will talk about one of them later, but I also enjoyed uh, The Midnight Library, and I, I kind of knew what to expect going in in terms of the content and what this was about, and I thought it was interesting, well written, it wasn't trying to do more than what I thought he would set out to do in a short nonfiction, but it was just his thoughts on uh, anxiety, depression, and you know the triggers that are starting to creep up more and more, or the things that can trigger those things in people that are cropping up more and more in everyday life. And you know, it's no wonder that there could potentially be a lot of repercussions from that. And so he, he just goes through his thoughts on a lot of interesting things and some advice that has at least helped him over the years in you know in his in dealing with his mental health and so it was very interesting and would recommend I think I'm gonna get a, a physical copy and annotate and mark some some key passages. I thought it was really interesting. He narrates the audiobook which was also really great. I then read The Galaxy in the Ground Within. This is the fourth book in the Wayfarer series by Becky Chambers. I absolutely love this series. It's a series of companion novels. It's a very soft, character-driven sci-fi series that really just follows the lives of characters of different species on different planets throughout different parts of this made-up universe. And none of the books have much in the way of a plot. <laughs> like, they just don't. So don't go in expecting that. I absolutely love these series though because I fall in love with the characters and I just think the characters' worlds, situations are just so interesting that I, I don't care that there's not much happening. And this one is no different. It literally follows a group of people uh, on a planet and there is a situation going on in the sky above this planet and so they're basically stuck there. They, they can't really travel, you know, to and from this planet. They're basically grounded for a while while this situation is resolved. And it's really just them being grounded on this planet and the implications that that has for what they were trying to accomplish and them getting to know each other and helping each other out through this period of time. <sighs> it was amazing. I loved it. I loved it. The Okay, so then we get, those were the books I read for the rest of April. The May books mostly follow the vlogs, the rest of the vlogs that I am referring to. So the next vlog I did was a romance contemporary reading vlog where I read The Hating Game by Sally Thorne, Enemies to Lovers, Office, Romance, uh, where you follow a couple of characters whose companies have merged and they don't get along at first, but situations happen, they end up falling for each other. I thought it was really cute and entertaining. I, I had a really fun time reading it. I also read Anna K by Jenny Lee. I did not enjoy this one. It Personally, this is a modern day Anna Karenina retelling that is set in New York City and follows, you know, some rich teenagers from New York City and I just and just follows their lives and some bits of drama that happened to them. And I honestly just, I just didn't care. <laughs> I just couldn't bring myself to really care about what was happening. I didn't really particularly, and it's not that I have to relate to the struggles of characters in order to enjoy a story, but it just it was a little more absurd and just unrelatable to me. And I, it didn't contribute to my ability to enjoy this book. <laughs> like, I just, I didn't care about the rich teenager drama and the drama with their families. So this one ultimately wasn't just for me. There's also some aspects of the writing style. Like, it's not that it was a poorly written book or anything, it's just the narration choices didn't really help. It really didn't help me feel connected to the characters either and really made me feel like I was at a distance from them. Um, anyway, wasn't, wasn't for me. I then read Date Me Bryson Keller for that vlog as well. Absolutely adored this one. This one follows 
a high school boy named Kai who there's a dare going on with a popular boy at school uh, where this boy Bryson Keller will date you know date the first person on Monday morning that asks him out he'll date them throughout the week and Kai is the one to ask him out on Monday morning nothing in the dare says it has to be a woman to ask him out so Bryson Keller's like all right cool and so and they have a really really cute and precious romance that I absolutely absolutely adored. They were so supportive of each other. They were so cute. Loved it. For that vlog I also read The Worst Best Man by Mia Sosa. This is a uh, I, this one was entertaining as well. This one was about Lena who was, I say left at the altar. Her fiance called the wedding off or left the wedding venue like the day of the wedding and so the ceremony never took place and um her fiance has a has a brother and lena some years later meets meets the brother and comes back into contact with her ex-fiance and his brother through uh through a situation and a work situation and you know so she's skeptical at first she doesn't really want to work with the brother or gets another brother because she doesn't really want contact with that family again after what happened uh, but she ends up falling for her ex-fiance's brother and it, it was cute it was fun it was entertaining the next vlog that I did was a week of reading middle grades and it was an absolute delight I read the first two books in the Pages & Co. Book Wanderers series by Anna James. And the first one is pretty slow. It introduces the world. It introduces our main character Tilly as a book wanderer who can go travel into her books and interact with the characters and see the world. So she explores that ability and you know, also her mother disappeared under mysterious circumstances and book wandering might actually help Tilly figure out what happened to her mother. Um, so the first one was a little bit slower, introducing the world and the setup. The next one, there are some larger politics at play with this society of book wanderers that Tilly gets involved in. I thought it was really cute and precious and just had an entertaining time with it and I, I adored Tilly as a character. I thought she was just fun to follow. I loved her grandparents, uh, who, who she lives with in a bookstore, or she lives over their, their bookstore. And it, it, was, it was pretty precious. I had a really fun time listening to these. I also read Hollow Fox by Jessica Townsend. This is the third book in the Nevermore series. I love the Nevermore series. This was not my favorite in the Nevermore series, but I still, absolutely freaking Lily loved it because I love Morgan, I love the cast of side characters here, I love the world, I love the hotel, I love the school, I love the vibe of this entire world, I love Jessica Townsend's writing, I love everything. Um, yeah, as I said, not my absolute favorite in the series, but the series is so high in my mind that not being my favorite in that series really doesn't mean much. I still enjoyed it a lot more than a lot of other books, you know what I mean? So, I had a really fun time with that one. I also listened to Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky by Kwame Mbalia, and this one was also very interesting. I had a good time with this one. Their, listening to it on audio was also, the narrator was really, really good with this one as well. I had a really good luck with audiobooks throughout most of these reads that I had on audio. Very good audiobook. Uh, definitely pretty fast paced for a middle grade. There's a lot going on. Tristan is trying to retrieve an object that's important to him and accidentally punches a hole in the sky, gets sucked into a world with a whole bunch of different kinds of creatures. Occasionally there would be some conveniences or some things that were a little bit confusing, uh, but overall I had a really fun time with this one as well. I then did a reread of Just Listen by Sarah Dess, and I actually read this physically. It's behind me but I don't want to get it at the moment. So image here. I really read this one and this is just a I was just in the mood for a fun, just contemporary romance and this one 
follows Annabelle and Owen and Anna there are quite a few trigger warnings in this one for uh, eating disorder and you know seeing her sister go through that and uh, there, there's quite a bit going on in this one and Annabelle is trying to deal with a lot of her family situation and is kind of retreating into her own head a lot and uh, she is having a lot of situations that, with her friends. There's been some stuff that, that happened. Um, also trigger warning for flashbacks to an incident of sexual assault and you know, she's so she's dealing with a lot and has kind of retreated a little bit to kind of figure some stuff out. She meets Owen and Owen really is help and Owen really is able to help her get through a lot of those things and help her work through some of that and she's able to help him work through some of his some of his issues as well uh, and they just I, I really actually like the two of them together I really like their dynamic a lot and the way that it's a very very slow burn and I just really like the way that their friendship and relationship developed over the course of the book I enjoy Sarah Dessen overall and it's just a fun easy read so the final set of books and this will take me into early June. Uh, so the final set of books are the books that I read for the prompts that Ken from Expedition Through Pages drew for me. Again, I will link that below. And I just wrapped up that vlog, but I will make sure that that is posted before I post this. Uh, so for that one, I read From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. And this is a fantasy romance, follows Poppy, who is the maiden and she is not supposed to really be touched, talked to, she can't really do much ahead of her ascension. And it's, anyway, she lives a very sheltered life and she, uh, her bodyguard ends up dying in the line of duty, she needs another bodyguard. The bodyguard that replaces him is someone that she had an interaction with before that we get to see and that is Hawk and she ends up falling for her bodyguard and realizes that she is kind of in the middle of a bunch of politics in this world. There are a bunch of different fantastical creatures and there's you know some history to this world. Things get revealed in kind of a weird way in this book and there are some things that aren't explained that I think could be explained throughout the narrative in a better way, but it was still overall an entertaining time. Uh, I enjoyed the relationships between uh, between Poppy and Hawk, and also Poppy and one of her close uh, close. I, I say friends, they're friends, but her friend also is there to help Poppy. Uh, but I, I like their dynamic as well a lot. So I had a really fun time with this one and I'm looking forward to continuing the series. I also read A Lady's Guide to Mischief and Nahum. This is a historical mystery romance uh, that follows Catherine. She is a, uh, there's a, a series of murders going on in London. She and a friend of hers are wanting to write about them so that the women of London can be warned and maybe be able to take some steps to better protect themselves from this serial killer. And through the process of writing and talking about these cases, she uh, interviews a witness that the detective on the case hadn't hadn't interviewed. And so there's a bunch going on with, you know, he is replaced as the primary investigator, uh, but there and there's a quick arrest, but maybe they've arrested the wrong person because the murders keep happening and so the original investigator investigator that they had kicked off of the case is brought back on as there is a new series of murders and Catherine kind of gets involved in helping him investigate these murders and figure out what's going on and they end up having a romance. I don't think the romance was super well developed but it was still a very entertaining read. I like I like the relationship between Catherine and the friend that she writes with. I also just love the mystery elements here. And I love Catherine as a character. She's just fun and spunky and doesn't want to take shit from anyone. <laughs> and 
you know, I do like her dynamic with the investigator. There's just, I, I wanted that more developed. I think it's a pretty short book. The audiobook is great. But it's narrated by Mary Jane Wells, so would recommend the audiobook. But again, more thoughts in the vlog. I also read The Humans by Matt Haig, which is a sci-fi that is pretty entertaining and funny. So many of these reads are just entertaining, right? Um, <laughs> and this follows a math professor who is actually killed, and an alien is brought to Earth to impersonate this math professor to erase any evidence that this math professor actually made the discovery that the mathematical discovery that he made and so the alien needs to make sure that he wipes out any evidence that this discovery happened take out any people that this professor might have told and in the process of doing this he actually and of course is trying to figure out humanity along the way because he is just thrust into the body of this professor impersonating him kind of just thrust onto earth and needs to figure out how to human in the process and ends up really falling in love with humanity for all its quirks and terribleness. He also really comes to appreciate humans and appreciate the math professor's family and really ends up wanting to protect them. Uh, there are some darker themes in here as well uh, including uh, triggers for suicidal ideation and a suicide attempt uh, so there are some darker themes here. I, I wasn't sure it would get that dark, but it, it does get pretty dark. But this is overall a, a much lighter book than some of his other ones, or a much funnier book, a much lighter book for good portions of it than some of his other work. I say that, like, the one other fiction book I've read of his. <laughs> uh, the other two books that I read for that vlog included Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I didn't intend to read this one, it just so happened that I was reading it while finishing up the audiobook for the last, the last book I intended to read for this vlog, and I know Ken has read Illuminae, so I just included it in the vlog footage. And this was amazing. It's a story told in multimedia form. It's not a traditional narrative. There is surveillance, descriptions of surveillance footage, there's interview transcripts, there's messages between different people, there are memos and briefings and uh, documents from the AI on the system, on the ship that we follow in this story. So it's told in a very interesting way. It follows an attack on a planet and there is an illegal oper mining operation that's happening on this planet. A rival company to the one that owns this illegal mining operation, a rival company comes to attack this mining operation in part to kind of drive people away and maybe able to take over this illegal mining operation for themselves. There are some colonists that are able to get away and so the company has sent a ship after them and is chasing them. We follow Katie and Ezra who were on the planet and ended up in two different ships that were escaping and things just get wild from there. They're, and Katie and Ezra are trying to figure out what's going on and some other characters too that they're connected with are trying to figure out what's going on, how they can protect themselves and how they can get out of this situation alive. It's nuts. It's wild. It was so entertaining. So entertaining. Loved it. The final book that I will talk about is Cosmos by Carl Sagan. And I, I love Cosmos. And there's, I'm not going to say much about this. If you watched Cosmos, both the original series with Carl Sagan and the newer iteration, I, I love Cosmos. I grew up watching the original series. And Carl Sagan is just a master communicator about science. He really just talks about astronomy, he talks about the planets, he talks about the universe, he talks about the history of science relevant to what he's specifically talking about. Uh, you know, he talks about so many things throughout this book and just his passion and enthusiasm for the universe and science and knowledge and exploration is just so infectious. And the audiobook is narrated by LeVar Burton. So I would highly recommend the audiobook as well. So that is it. I'm caught up on all of the recent reads. And hopefully I will be able to do this a little more frequently so that I don't need to cover as many books in one go. But let's hope that this footage isn't 
too long. Thanks for watching. <laughs> and again, I'll do this more frequently in the future now that I am back in my apartment, a little more settled. Still busy, but a little more settled. And I will leave, again, all the relevant videos below. I will also leave information about how you can support the Black Lives Matter movement. I will leave my Twitter and Instagram link down below as well. That is how I like to, or that's where I like to hang out. And thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for more bookish content, and I will see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye.